Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll continue with episode 21 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode we'll be covering recursion. For us to do a example of recursion we'll have to create a function. Simply put, a recursive function is created when a function makes a call to itself. So let's create a function. We can call it fun. First we'll put our return type in front We'll return an integer and we'll call fun and we won't pass anything into fun, but we can keep calling fun. So I'll also print out something to the console with C out and I'll say we're having fun. All right. And then I'll put an end line at the end call to a recursive function. But before we do that, make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. All right, to call that function, we do it just like we have been in the past. We'll call fun and main. And now what would you expect to happen here? I'm going to say we just created an infinite loop. Let's give this a shot. So if I go over to my terminal and I compile things, it's giving me a warning because I forgot a return statement. I'll fix that real quick. I just forgot to return something. I'm just gonna return zero for now and save that. All right, let's recompile and run the program. As you can see, what was happening is we had a bunch of we're having fun on the screen printed out to us. And eventually what happened was we got a segmentation fault. It said the core was dumped. Why did this happen? Well, let's go back here. You might have said to yourself, well, that looks fun, but this definitely has its drawbacks as we could see. With the way that we currently have this, it created an infinite loop calling the same function over and over again, right? So we started out calling fun, fun was called, fun said we're having fun, and fun was ran again. So it ran itself, did this, ran itself, did this, so on so forth infinitely. But it had to stop. The major reason this kept running was because we have no conditions to stop the calling of this same function recursively. Eventually, just like we saw, this causes a stack overflow because the stack has a limited amount of space. So we can imagine a stack much like memory. So we'll pretend this is some finite amount of space for the stack. So we have however many positions are here in the stack. And all I'm referring to when I say stack is a location where local data variables and functions get stored while you're running your program. This is somewhere in memory, but you only are allotted a fixed amount of space for that local data, the variables and the various functions that you're calling to be pushed onto the stack. So really how this works is when you're running your program, the stack gets filled up, it gets filled up by functions, local variables. So we could pretend that uh, here main gets pushed onto the stack, then fun gets pushed on the stack, and then any local variables here would get pushed on the stack inside of fun. So we can imagine something uh, like this, main, and then that calls fun, which calls fun, which calls fun, and we can already see our problem here. Eventually, fun will run up to this limit up top, and it will overflow the stack. Hopefully that gives you a sense of what's happening here in the stack. Let's say you only called fun once. It wasn't a recursive function. So we say it gets allocated on the stack. So main might get allocated as the very first function here. Fun as a second function call. So once main calls fun, fun will get called. And once it returns or exits out of the function, it will actually get removed or popped out of the stack. And then we only have main. So you can see maybe you have multiple functions that you call throughout your program and it keeps getting returned back to name. So maybe you have fun two. So fun one got called, main calls fun one, then that goes back to main, main calls fun two, and then it goes back to main. And eventually main returns something and exits out of the program entirely, leaving your stack empty. All right, so there's a lot to learn about the stack and other portions of memory available by your program but we'll talk about that at a later date. That's just to give you a little bit of a primer there of what's happening. So let's put a condition in order to make this recursive function a little more useful. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. Let's make uh, it fairly simple. I'm gonna make an integer called num. I'm gonna set it equal to five. And inside of here, we'll say, if num not equal to five, then we'll move these two statements 
into here. Otherwise, we return a zero and exit out of this function. We'll make sure to pass that num in. Actually, I'll change this to uh, zero. And let's decrement num once we pass it into the function. So I'm doing fun. I'm passing in num. I'll change my declaration up to top to match. And now I'm passing in a number to this fun function. And if that number is not equal to zero, then we keep executing the statements inside of here. Otherwise, we return a zero. The last thing I want to do is before we call this fun again, I'm going to decrement the number. So num minus minus, that'll subtract one from number every single time we execute this if statement. All right, so let's give this a shot real quick. And I messed up. I forgot to say what data type this is. It's an integer. Don't forget to specify the data types for your function parameters. Let's try this again. And I also forgot to pass in num into here. So that should do it. All right, if we recompile, we're good there. Let's run the program. And now we see we're having fun written out five times to us. So this time we put a condition that would kick us out of, out of the recursive function calls by returning a zero once we reached five written statements. That's because we start with five, go to four, three, two, one, and then all the way to zero. That gives us exactly five statements printed out. And that's an example of making a recursive function with a condition. So this isn't really that useful because of course you can use a for loop or any other type of loop in order to do the same thing. Recursive functions aren't really that great. They do have their places in specific types of algorithms, but it's not something that's really normally used although it's nice to understand. We'll do one more example here. And if you haven't already, make sure to go down below, smash that like button for me, and we'll continue on by redoing this fun function. So I'm just erasing this so we can go through a little bit easier. I'll still pass back an integer and accept an integer as a parameter called num. This time I'll do a different condition. So I'm gonna say if num, is double equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, we're going to return a sum. If we're not returning that sum, let's make an else clause and say our sum is going to be plus equals num. So we'll take sum plus num and put it in a sum. And we'll decrement again num and we'll keep calling fun with num. To make my life easier, I'm also going to define a global integer called sum up top. And better yet, instead of returning anything, I'll just print it out here. There's no point since it's global to return it. And since we're not returning anything here, make the return parameter a void. Awesome. So what's this function do? Let's go through it real quick. We're expecting an integer number. If that number is equal to zero, then we just print out the sum. Otherwise, we take the current number, add it to sum, and then we decrement the number and we keep going through this else statement until we reach zero and we print out the sum. So just to start things out here, let me set this equal to zero. That way we have it initialized at least to something. And then we'll need to make our call here below in main. So I'll define int num. We'll actually ask the user to supply that number and we'll call our function fun with that number. Finally, I'll just return a zero to make the program happy. And I think this is enough to run our program. Let's give this a shot and show how we created another recursive function that adds up the sum of consecutive numbers and see if it works properly. All right, if we compile and run our program, now we have a blinking cursor, meaning it's expecting a number here. So I'm going to put in 10 and we got out 55. So if you add up 10, plus nine plus eight and so on and so forth all the way down to one, you get 55. So that's correct, awesome. Our recursive function works just fine and helps us do something actually by giving the sum of consecutive numbers that are specified by a user. Now again, you can use a for loop or some sort of other loop in order to achieve the same function. And it's a better way because this does take up a lot of stack space in order to do and isn't really necessary. Well, I hope you learned a bit about recursive functions and recursion here today. Make sure to post any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. 
catch me and a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.